And herein lies the problem. I want to be there, not here. Oh dear. Just got slightly lost. Oh, I worked hard for this, didn't I? <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to this week's video. My name's Flossy, and this is Siren the Step Van, my self converted step van or Grumman van, home on wheels. I modeled it after a cabin in the woods. Speaking of woods, we're doing a lot of adventuring in the woods at the moment. It is fall and I'm dealing with a lot of grief, adjustment to season, and this week I really wanted to bring you with me to connect our bodies a little bit more with nature and the outdoors. I hope you're excited. This is a little different. <sighs> I saw what I think is a bear scrape back there. I don't know enough about tracking bears. With the state of the world it is as at the moment, a lot of us are burnt out, overtaxed, tired, shut down. You might be out there being like, what? on earth are you up to now Flossy? Where are you? Why are you in the middle of yet another forest and what are you doing this time? What's that on your shoulder? Well, I have parked the van at a trailhead. Oh, this trail kind of disappears here. Ah! And I'm trying to get down to the beach so that I can have a beach fire. This is my fire tripod which I hang a pot on. So we're trying to find the ocean. We're going down a lot of hill right now. So I hope I find my way back or end up at the beach that I'm intending to because I totally definitely took a completely random pathway. So I'm on a little bit of a wild adventure. Who knows where I'm going? Um, but we're going downhill, which when you're talking about the ocean is always a good idea. And I'm gonna to have to make several trips because <sighs> this pole is heavy and I can't carry everything at once. Just hiked in with this and herein lies the problem. I wanna be there, not here. Oh dear. Wish me luck. Me and my dry feet as I try and navigate through here. At least the tide is out. That's a bonus. Okay. We're getting there. So I think if I walk around the side of the swamp, I will not swamp, the inlet, I can cross over and then hustle up the side of the mountain, up the side of that cliff there. Because I don't think going along the water line the other way is gonna work. Especially not carrying this. Beautiful. It's a little waterway, and I'm very lucky that the tide is out because my shoes are still dry. And I'm pretty sure there's a path up there. Maybe I climb up that way. Oh, I'm very lucky the tide is out, and I have climbed up here. And then here is the trail that I should have been on to get to the other side of this beautiful bay. Just got slightly lost. That's where I was. Ooh. Oh, what a shame. Really? All you hear is generator noise, it's such a bane. So I'm not going to go 
down to this beach because I don't actually think there is much beach here. And I don't want to be looking at, yeah, no beach. And I don't want to be looking at that. So my goal is to go around that point a little more. I would say it's a woodpecker, but a pileated woodpecker normally makes rectangle shaped holes. So either all of the holes have joined together, or this is some serious woodpecker work. Yeah, it could be, because see, there's the shape of the rectangle from a pileated woodpecker. Wow, look at that. forest out here. So how do I get here down here to swim? It's so beautiful. I want to kayak over to that island. This is what we're looking for. Bimble. Is there another beach around the corner? Let me just check. Right, I'm stashing things so I don't have to carry them later. Jacket is here. Beach is down here. Let me scramble back to oh! <laughs> Just fell down. Okay. Beach is down here. cannot see it from the trail. And most people are truly not that observant. And the beach is down there. Now I'm really hopeful that the tide will be going out so I can make a little fire down there in a little bit. There'll be a little bit more beach by then. <sighs> I'm very warm. I have stashed a few things and I'm staying here overnight. So I don't have to carry everything else back in the dark, which is super great. So now I'm going to go back and get a torch, my cast iron pot, and I'm going to fill the pot with things to cook and eat and kind of make a big one pot meal, which is super exciting. <sighs> Yay. Oh, and like, isn't this shoreline just beautiful? in like both directions i'm very happy if i could live forever on this kind of coastline minus the tanker i would be very happy I am waiting for the rain to stop and then I am going to take my fire pot to the beach for beach fire so I've got to try and pack everything and pack everything as light as possible because everything has to fit in this backpack or be carried and it's like two kilometer walk so let's get organized Potatoes, pesto. Okay. What are we gonna have with the potatoes? Tofu, cheese? Actually, maybe not tofu. Maybe <laughs> we'll splash out and have some bacon. That's a good enough meal. I am dressed 
for the weather and have a backpack on my back and this bag on the front and we're gonna go into the forest down to the beach for a fire I made it I'm very hot and sweaty it is darker in the forest than it actually is out it's getting close to sunset and the tide is going out so I'm gonna have more beach but I've got to scramble down this hill so I'm gonna take everything down in two goes because I will fall on my ass down this embankment if I try and do it all at once. Okay, let's go. By the beach fire, we sat on the beach, just me and the ocean, my back tucked into hollows, scooped out of the rocks behind me, the fire we had built flickered, and drew our eyes into its depths, spark escaped from resinous pine and leapt like twisting fireflies into the approaching dark. The sea whispered towards my feet to leave ribbons of lacy foam. I gazed across the bay, watching seagulls search for rest. The end of the day trailed its skirts of pink and blue and mauve, then slowly fell pooled in gold over the dark horizon. Fire on your finger, fire in your eye, fire in your spirit, fire that just won't die. Fire in the bare bones of being, fire to uphold what's right, fire in the heart of darkness, fire to fuel love's light. Fire to burn but not consume. Fire to learn and not assume. Fire to live and give living room. Fire to love and sing their tune. The sea whispered towards my feet to leave ribbons of lacy foam I gazed across the bay, watching seagulls search for rest. <coughs> mm. Oh, I worked hard for this dinner. <clears throat> I hiked for like two hours because I went, oh, <laughs> I had to try and find the place. So I went a long way around got lost and then it's a half an hour hike here and I've done it three times one two three plus an extra half an hour for being lost yeah two and a half hours by the time I get home to bed very tired and happy flossy it's been so nice out here by myself I'd hoped people would join me but you know I'm one of those people who I don't know if I have the social energy to hang out with other folks until I'm in the moment so do I invite people in ahead of time is like really difficult anyway it's been so nice. I feel like the ocean has been my company as it recedes and goes out. These beautiful cedars that I'm sitting under, the fire, the wet logs that I managed to make burn. It's all magical. And now I have to wait till the fire goes down a little bit more and it's safe to leave. The tide will come up. It's below the high, high tide line. So it will make sure it's completely out. And then begin the half hour hike back. Yeah. I'm gonna sleep deeply, well, wonderfully when I get back. It's been so nice sharing this with you.
I've been a bit burnt out and a bit all of the new things all at once so coming to a gathering of community to hold space feels really important I don't know if any of you have heard of something called running a grid before it's called different things in different communities this is not technically what I would call it but for the purposes of YouTube I might call it this um, essentially what that means is having an intention for the things that one goes about doing I wanted to share this one with you I want you to find five points on your body wherever they may be close your eyes and feel into each one of these five points we're gonna go through them one by one I want to feel with you where in you your body you feel curiosity where in your body do you feel curiosity where in your body do you feel Curiosity. Can you hear the singing and sighing of the forest? Where in your body do you feel courage? Where do your body tell you that it's courageous. Where does it feel courageous? I'll tell you why I'm asking you to name all of these points in just a moment. <sighs> Where in your body do you feel comfort? Where is a place that you can tap into in your body and go, ah, oh, comfort. Comfort can mean safety. Comfort can mean sexiness. Comfort can mean that ah oh, feeling. Where in your body do you find comfort? Where do you find in your body community? Community, animal, person, nature, seen and unseen, in person and distant. Four-legged, two-legged, winged, mystical. Where do you find connection? Where do you feel connection in your body? I guess you're wanting to me to tell you why I'm asking you all of these words and where you feel them in your body. Come for a little bit more of a walk and then we'll talk about it. When we can grid our bodies and then connect to a place in our bodies that bring up a certain feeling. Those are our, create internal resources for us. With the state of the world it is as at the moment, a lot of us are burnt out, overtaxed, tired, shut down, under-resourced, overtaxed, stressed out, timed out, and disconnected from our bodies. So the most radical thing that we can do right now without any resources is to find a place in our body where we can create internal support systems if you can feel comfort by tapping into the way you hold your belly or the way your butt fits in your favorite chair if you can find courage by the way you hold your shoulders or the way you pinch your guns then you can tune into those and bring more of those resources into your body anytime you need them. We have allies and support and friends and community and familiars and nature around us to connect with. 
but within ourselves I feel like it's really important to rebuild relationship to connect with ourselves so that we can resource and keep ourselves going when shit gets tough oh that's why I'm taking this week off this is why I haven't edited a video this week this is why I haven't looked at a computer screen in days and it feels so good I feel comfort I feel comfort I feel comfort and I want that for you too curiosity comfort courage compassion and community curiosity comfort courage compassion community curiosity comfort compassion courage community for you Being in the forest is so enlivening for me. I can be feeling drained and shitty. And then coming out here, I feel alive again. My health worries lessen. Other things that are on my mind shrink. I'm not quite sure where I am. But I know I'll find my way. I saw what I think is a bear scrape back there. It might be, might not be, I don't know. I don't know enough about tracking bears. There's definitely one in the area. But it's given me this gratitude and desire to deeply listen to the forest sighing creaking squeaking cracking crackling to figure out what it might be it's my favorite thing I'm so glad that you get to come with me so now I'm walking this way to find a path that way hopefully back down the hill back to forest pods I've recognized. I know this is a woodpecker hole, but doesn't it also look like a window into an elven lair, an elven castle? been so nice sharing this with you if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button did you know only 50% of the people who watch my videos are subs or are 46 percent of the video people who watch these videos are subscribed over 50% of you aren't and it really makes a difference to me it may not make a huge difference to you but it does for me um, hit the subscribe button the notification bell you know the drill I will love you and leave you and probably see you all in the morning. Bye.